Hello, my name is Felicity from the Model Evaluation and Diagnostics team. This video is um, an introduction to ESM Valcore API and using it. So as an overview, uh, we're going to look at logging into ARE and starting a Jupyter Lab session and then finding data sets um, using ESM Valcore. So as um, a refresher, a quick overview of the core. So ESM Val tool is built as a command line tool using ESM Val core. Um, so previous videos we looked at using the recipe, um, the config user file, diagnostic scripts around that. Um, so it, within ESM Val core are all the preprocessor modules. So here we can then pull that out and use that as a library as well. Um, so for, for more information and reference, you can see this page here. Um, you'll, you can find it in ESM Val tool documentation under more, um, just down the bottom ESM Val core API reference. And we'll just go through some of these things here. So to start off with, we'll have to log into ARE and start um, a Jupyter Lab session. So using the settings as what you will need or require, uh, any more info on these, you can refer to NCI. Um, but more importantly is mounting the storage um, as you need them. So any G data location that has the data you want to use, um, you'll have to load that here, as well as um, G data XP65, which is where the, the module lives that, we, that we're going to use, the SMVAL tool module. And you can load that module under the advanced options. So having a look here, I've logged into ARE and then I'll, you can go here to start a Jupyter Lab session. Um, I've got some pre-remembered settings, so just set them up how you need. Um, here is the storage, so I've popped in um, everything that I could use. And under advanced options is where you can set your module directories and load the ASM Valtor module. And then down the bottom, you can just launch that. So I've got one running already. Um, here's starting. And we'll have a look at this example. Just as a refresher, we can look at the um, ESM Val tool workflow. And under here, as a reminder, some of the, the locations for some data you may want to use. Um, and also how we, we would load the module in the command line. So it's all the same module. So going back to the example, we'll have a look at um, starting with config. So here you can load the config object um, and by default it will just read your your default global config file um, which will be in your home directory. So as a reminder this is the command line tool to get the config file um, and because I've already got one it won't copy it but this is just showing you this is where you find that default file. Here, if you want to use a different config file, you can also load um, from file, and then this will give you that config from this file and the settings in it. Um, here, because you've got that config object here, you can then edit um, edit it like a dictionary. So you can do some different settings and change your output directory, which will come out here um, as an example. So yeah, now we'll move on to the data set um, object. So here, if we go back to the API reference, for more information, you can check this config page, um, which ran through some of those things. And now we'll look at the data set object, which um, is used for finding data and, and loading it. So look here for some more um, information. So here's an example of a data set I've defined as TADS. Um, and some facets here. So when I've set this up and run it, you can see it just looks like a dictionary. Then we can define files um, and it'll it, we can list the files for that data set. Here it's found this local file um, and it's full path. So that now that we've got that data set object, we can also update those facets like a dictionary. So here, comment this out and update Ensemble to include any value. So that's what the star is there. Um, I can run that and, it, and I've created this list of data sets, um, which is looking from the available files. But now that we've updated the TAS data set, if we find files now, it'll look 
find all those ensembles. And here are the list of data sets um, will show us that we've got the 10 data sets found. And that's the list of data sets. Comment that out. So another thing you can do is update um, to include all data sets as another example. You run this here, it'll take a bit longer for more things uh, to search. And we'll see here it's found the four 97 data sets. So also that's from uh, the available data sets. So that's what that list is as well, just to reiterate. So here we also have this other data sets recipe function um, might be handy for composing recipes. To use this, you, you do need to set a diagnostic. Um, so here we've just set it as a diagnostic name. Um, I'll update this to not include all the 400. So now we've just got the 10. And if we run this, we can see this formats it to um, what we would see in the recipe. So I've got the data sets. And here's this is why it needed a diagnostic name. We need that in the recipe. And you can see it's got um, the format for the recipe for all the 10 ensembles. So moving on now to uh, supplementary data sets. So here's an example. I'll use uh, sea ice concentration variable. Um, on another note for data sets, you can also, it's got this copy function um, that you can use to create another data set and update with certain facets. So I've got this one here to use a different data set, experiment, etc. So this will create, a, this will then be another data set, a copy of that. And here I've got an add supplementary function. So this will look for area and add that to that file. And, and then this will find the files for um, the data set and supplementary. So if we look at here, we've found that the file for the CIS concentration, and then it's got a supplementary here as well, which we can then do our, cause it's a list. Um, we'll get the first entry and can also list those files here. So, um, then we can load the data as a cube and run how we need, or we can load from this file path as well if you want to load in a different format other than an RS cube. Here is an example of run this against model up here, data set, which we haven't run the add supplementary, so um, it won't have any supplementaries in it. So moving on, we can look at ESMVAL tool having a local file and an ESGF file type. Um, we can go back to the documentation here. So we have this ESGF module that has the ability to find files on ESGF nodes, um, and then you can also download them and see what's available there. Then otherwise we've been using just the local file system and finding files that we don't have to download. So obviously for this, you'll need um, internet connection for it to download and search. So looking at this example, um, we've loaded this find files function and we can just look for this data set. So we run that and it's found this ESGF file and it'll, then you can call um, to download. So here is a list. So I've taken this first file and I can download that to a, to a directory as you would define where you want to save it. Um, so that's the ESGF file type. Once it's a local file, then you can, can load it, etc. So here we'll load um, the previous data set we've defined, the TAS one, and it'll load as a cube, so an RS cube that was mentioned. Um, we can have a look at what that cube looks like here. It'll have the variable and the dimensions and any information. So there is um, here's an example of slicing that cube where we just take the first um, slice of the first dimension and then everything else. Um, so here you can see it's just lat and long and the time slice is 1995. So when we define TAS data set, I'll just come up here. We gave it a time range for 1995. So the first one is that one there. So 
So for more information on Iris Cubes, there is um, some documentation here and you can go through some of, so because it's an Iris Cube, you can then use um, the Iris library to do any processing, etc. as well. So just to, um, as an example, to look at doing something with that cube, I've imported a preprocessor function, climate statistics, um, and just run a basic mean. And then just imported um, some plot functions. So Iris has some wrappers around quick plots. So we can run this. And that's the TAS cube we've just loaded. And we've run that mean and done that and have a look. So as a recap in this video, we've introduced the ESMVAL core API um, using it in ARE in a Jupyter notebook. Um, we've loaded the config object. Um, and we've looked at the data set and creating that object and using it. So as always, reach out through the Access Hive forum for support and suggestions. Um, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.